In this video, we will discuss effusion, diffusion, and Graham's Law. You learned in Chapter 6 that when a gaseous species is sampled at a given temperature, the gas will show a distribution of speeds given by the Maxwell speed distribution. Here we see the speed distribution for O2 at 300 Kelvin and also at 1000 Kelvin. Note that the distribution clearly changes when the temperature changes. As the temperature is increased, the location of the peak in the curve shifts to a higher speed. In Chapter 6, you also learned about a special kind of average speed known as the root mean square speed of a gas, as given by this formula here. U represents the root mean square speed, R is the ideal gas constant, T is the Kelvin temperature, and M is the molecular mass in units of kilograms per mole. This equation clearly shows that from the perspective of the kinetic molecular theory of gases, the root mean square speed of a gaseous molecule is directly related to the square root of the Kelvin temperature and inversely related to the square root of the molecular mass. The speed distribution for O2 at 300 Kelvin is shown here along with the root mean square speed represented by the green line. At a given temperature, let's say room temperature, a less massive molecule such as H2 moves faster on average than a more massive molecule such as O2 as shown in this picture. Note that the root mean square speed of H2 is approximately 1930 meters per second while the root mean square speed of O2 at the same temperature is only about 480 meters per second. This brings us to the topics of diffusion and effusion. Diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Effusion is the movement of a gas through a small opening. As you learned in Chapter 6, Graham's Law of Effusion is given by the equation shown on the screen now where rate 1 is the rate of effusion of gas number 1, rate 2 is the rate of effusion of gas number 2, M1 is the molecular mass of gas number 1, and M2 is the molecular mass of gas number 2. Note that lighter gases will effuse faster than heavier gases, thus explaining why helium-filled balloons deflate much faster than air-filled balloons. Using the same reasoning as was used in the development of Graham's Law, one can develop an expression that will predict how two different gases of two different molecular masses will travel in a tube at a given temperature. So let's start with two different gaseous species. In this case, we will use concentrated hydrochloric acid to generate gaseous hydrogen chloride and concentrated ammonia to generate gaseous ammonia. These two gaseous molecules react to give ammonium chloride, which is a white solid. The equation for this reaction is given here. Here we see what the reaction looks like. We have concentrated hydrochloric acid on the right, concentrated ammonia on the left. By simply removing the stoppers, the vapors interact producing ammonium chloride. We can perform a semi-quantitative experiment by simultaneously introducing hydrogen chloride at one end of a glass tube and ammonia at the other end. A meter stick can be used to measure where the white ring forms, indicating how far each gas has traveled. The faster moving gas molecule will move a greater distance in a given amount of time than a slower moving gas molecule. Since the distance traveled by a gaseous molecule is directly related to its speed for a given time interval, then we can use the ratio of the RMS speeds of the ammonia and hydrogen chloride molecules to calculate the ratio of the distances traveled by the gaseous ammonia and hydrogen chloride molecules. We see the calculation here. So in theory, based upon the RMS speeds, the ratio of the distance traveled by the ammonia to the distance traveled by the hydrogen chloride should be 1.46. Let's now measure this value in the laboratory. 
Here is the glass tube that we are going to use to do this measurement. We have a meter stick sitting in front of it. The left hand side of the meter stick is flush with the left end of the tube. And we see that the length of the glass tube is 90 centimeters or 0 0.9 meters. We will take the tube and simultaneously introduce ammonia on the left side and hydrogen chloride on the right. This is done by soaking one piece of cotton in concentrated ammonia and a second piece in concentrated hydrochloric acid. The cotton balls are then simultaneously inserted into the opposing ends of the glass tube with the ammonia being on the left end and the hydrochloric acid being on the right. We will watch to see where the white ring forms. This process takes quite a while, so I'll speed the video up a bit so that uh, we will not take up too much time. Once the white ring starts to form, I'll slow the video back down again so that we can watch it further develop. Along the right hand side of the tube there, one can clearly see a white ring starting to develop. Once it gets a little bit easier to see, we will then measure its position along the tube. The ring is very easy to see now. So we will place the meter stick along the tube and see that the ring is forming at about 56 centimeters or so. So the gaseous ammonia traveled 56 centimeters and the gaseous hydrogen chloride traveled 34 centimeters. Thus the ratio of the distance traveled by ammonia to the distance traveled by hydrogen chloride is 1.65. Compared to our theoretical calculation, we get a percent error shown on the next slide of 12.6 percent. There are several possible sources of error in our experiment. Firstly, the distance measurement involving the ammonium chloride was far from quantitative. Secondly, the gases may not have been introduced into to the diffusion tube at exactly the same time. Thirdly, there's also air in the tube and the air molecules, that is nitrogen and oxygen, will have collisions with our gaseous species that we introduced, making things a little bit more complicated. As illustrated in this video, the seemingly simple phenomenon of diffusion is actually a very complex process that requires a significant amount of advanced mathematics to model. However, with a very simple approach, we can predict the diffusion behavior of simple gases at room temperature to within 15 percent.